Hello and welcome to another quilting video. I'm Olivia and in this video I'm going to make the quilt you're seeing now. And I want to see how quickly I can do it. My aim is to be done before dinner time but I think I can get it done before that. So stick around and we'll see how it goes. Like so many people right now I'm working remotely from home and this is where it happens. The problem is I'm in the northern hemisphere and it is cold here right now. So I want to make a nice little lap quilt that I can keep on this chair to use on days when I don't want to turn the heat on. I want something that kind of blends all of the colours you can see in my living room here. At the moment I don't have a quilt that fits that bill, so I'm going to make one. At the moment I've been using this quilt, which I love, but the colours don't go with what I want. I think because of the blue and the purple here. It's a perfect size, which is good, so I'm going to use that as a bit of a template. Um, but I need something that's going to look good if I just chuck it on the back here, because honestly that's generally how things are. I bought a fat quarter bundle of some new art gallery fabric pure solids colors for 2021 and I didn't have a plan when I got them but I love them so much and they're going to be perfect for this. And just quickly check this out how good are these stickers that come on the solid colors. I cannot tell you how many times I've not known what a solid fabric is once it's arrived from the shop so I am in love with these stickers. And then I also have some of this um, Kona Bone, which I'm going to use for the background. I was looking for a quilt pattern that was kind of modern, um, kind of simple, and I found this, which I like. And actually, hang on a second. Okay, that's better. <laughs> so, I'm going to make the baby size. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use the same dimensions as the outside, so I'll make the inside according to the pattern and then I'll figure out the dimensions of the outside after that to make sure it's a pretty similar size to what I've been using because I like that size. So recently I shared this video with some tips for trying to make a quilt in a day and I'm putting those tips into action now and also some of your tips actually. In the comments of that video, Corey said how she will announce to her friends and family she's making a quilt that day so she can get some uninterrupted quilting time. And I love that idea. So I've done that. I've put the word out that tomorrow's a quilting day. I've checked. I've got enough thread. I know I've got batting. I have a plan for some backing I'm going to use. I think I'm going to leave this stuff here and I'll see you tomorrow. All right, as you can see, I did not get a super early start to the morning today. I'm up now. I've had my coffee. I've double checked my measurements and I'm ready to get going. I'm never a fan of cutting fabric, I don't enjoy it as part of the quilting process, but luckily the cuts for this quilt are fairly simple and it hasn't taken too long. And the beautiful part about this pattern, I haven't even finished it yet, but check out how much fabric I've still got left after I've cut all the colours for my quilt. I love that I'm going to be able to use these again because some of them are my new favourites. I don't always like to cut multiple layers of fabric at once, but for a situation like this where it's a small cut already and I'm making it even smaller, the fabric doesn't need to move much. Um, it's really easy to just layer the fabrics and cut them all together and it just saves that little bit extra time. But then when it comes to something like this where it's a long skinny piece of fabric and you can see how much I'm moving each one strip of fabric to cut it down, I wouldn't trust myself to make those smaller cuts uh, evenly and accurately if I had multiple layers stacked on top of each other. So these ones I just did one by one. I think another thing that can really help when trying to make a quilt in a day is to use simple quilt blocks and also to just use one quilt block over and over again. If your quilt top is made of say five different quilt blocks, just the process of making one and then making a different block and making a different block and constantly like mentally jumping from task to task, that can take time. So for this quilt, the fact that it's literally just the straight lines pieced together, there's so little thought up until the last layout step. So then you can kind of just become like uh, an assembly line and these early steps go nice and quickly. So with my small pieces all combined, I separated them out by color. And then for each color, I made two or three separate piles. 
to indicate how many times I wanted that color in a separate block in the quilt top, if that makes sense. So as you can see here, then I just took each block and placed them together. I think I like this layout. Um, I'm gonna go get some lunch and then I'll come back and assess. I made a couple of changes just because I realized when I'm sitting down with this quilt on my lap, I want my favorite colors to be in this section here. So you might notice here, I did end up rotating a couple of my rows at this point because I like them better. And you'll also see how on the edge over here and again on the other side here and here, I've got that white piece. That shouldn't be there according to the pattern, but I figured earlier um, it made sense to add it. So I didn't have to worry about figuring out which lines were on the edge in the beginning. So I just added them on. It was an extra step to take them out, but it removed a lot of kind of mental work. Here's a good little trick for when you're using sashing like this, which I don't do often, but right now I'm marking the lines on the sashing. You see how they extend up from my piece lines? And now I can use those marked lines on the sashing to keep my pieced lines accurate and straight. So then I'm just pinning them together, which I don't often do, but this is a time when I want to be really accurate. After I've sewn those rows together, you can see how well all my vertical lines match up. By some coincidence, the difference between my old quilt I've been using and the new quilt I'm making is exactly the width of my ruler, which makes it very easy to cut out my border pieces. But then I wasn't sure for a little while if I really wanted the same width all the way around. You can see here I was playing around for a bit. Do I want skinnier sides? Do I want even all the way around? But in the end, you can see I just went for the same even border all the way around. Mostly for ease, honestly. Okay, so against my own advice, I did not check my backings. I've been thinking of this red fabric that I have and I'm pretty sure I have it. And yes, okay, good. So this is what I'm going to use. It's another art gallery pure solids. It's not exactly the same as what's included in the quilt top. This backing fabric is a bit more orange um, and the one in the quilt top is a bit of a more pink red. But I think it looks good together so I'm very happy with that. At this point I also decided to just use that same fabric for the binding so I decided to go ahead and make the binding first because I dislike making binding more than I dislike basting. <laughs> And of course then it was time to baste and I had no basting spray. I was so sure I had some that I didn't even check yesterday which was a mistake and was so annoying. Uh, so I ran out. Luckily I didn't lose too much time because I brought the quilt in the car with me to, and I trimmed off some of these loose threads on the back um, but that was a time delay that I really didn't want. Luckily the actual basting is pretty quick, that's never a big deal. As I said, I don't hate basting, it never takes too long, um, and I could get right onto quilting. I decided to just go right down the middle in between all of my coloured lines. And I used this old trick that I did when I first started quilting, before I knew anything. I took a post-it um, and I measured the distance between my lines and I stick that onto the front of my machine. I used to do this before I knew about quilting markers um, or the machine attachments that will mark your lines for you. And right now I don't have any of those things for this machine, so it's back to the basics with this one. 
and I used this for the sides where I didn't have the coloured lines to keep me straight. It's very low tech but I kind of love it. Alright, quilting is done! As you can see here, I did straight lines in between my coloured lines and I like that it's simple. I might go back and hand quilt in between each of the coloured lines here, but that's something I can do later, so I'm not going to worry about it now. Um, now what I'm going to do is zigzag along the edge here and then trim off this excess and get my binding on. I was actually pretty happy with how quickly the binding came together. Um, it was time for my weekly family isolation Zoom call, so that was kind of fun to just sit and bind on the call. I did my usual big stitch binding now, and I did quite big stitches, as you can see, uh, which made it come together nice and quickly, and it added a little interest to such a plain back, so I'm really happy with that. Okay, it's now 9.40, almost, what, 12, 13 hours since I started this quilt and we're all done. I'm really happy with it. I'm happy that it's all done today and I'm excited to see how it looks in the proper light of day tomorrow. Here it is in all its glory, my new quilt, um, and it just brings together all the colours so well. Um, you know I made it to go here on this chair, but I moved it around so much because it just it goes anywhere. I'm really happy I kept in this peachy colour um, because I almost took that out from the bundle. Um, and also this brown, actually, I almost took both of those out, but it just adds so much and it really goes well with, especially over here with these things. I'm just really happy with it and I'm really glad that you came along for the journey. This quilt. I mean, I think it looks great, I love the size, I think that's going to be perfect and keep me nice and warm, which is ideal because it looks like we're getting snow this week. And that will never not be a novelty for me. So I'm going to leave you guys with some glamour shots of this little guy. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next quilting video.